Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to go through solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSA Green Booklet, Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 12, questions 42 to 48. Now, when you had a look at this unit, you were probably just like, oh my god, if you sat the GAMSA and you saw something like this, one and a half pages long, with a couple of diagrams and lots of information, you'd probably just be like, oh, I'm over this already. But, I mean, look, I summarized all of that information into five dot points. There's only really about five key points we need to know from this stimulus. So it's the differences between respiration between humans and birds. So unlike humans, the gas exchange in birds, it doesn't occur when air passes through the lungs and it ends in an air sac. So that's one thing to, to, to take note of. In birds, sacs are poorly vascularized and they facilitate airflow between the lungs. And air travels one way through parabronchi in birds, whereas airflow is bidirectional in human alveoli. So it goes in and it comes out. Breathing in birds consists of two cycles. That's very important. Whereas in humans, this process occurs in one cycle. So it's going to come up in one of the questions when we discuss why that's important. So and finally, sacs in birds, they primarily act like diaphragms to facilitate the flow of air in the system. That's also important for a couple of the questions coming up. So if we take a look at question 42, after we've read all of that information in the stimulus, it asks, for the single breath of radioactively labelled air, gas exchange in the bird occurs mainly during what stage? So if we take a look at figure 3, so remember in figure 1 we're told that uh, what Q and P represent, so um, the... Uh, Anterior sac, so posterior sac is labeled P, anterior sac is Q, and the lungs are those um, lines in the middle, so a little compartment in the middle. And so we're trying to find out where gas exchange mainly occurs. Um, it's obvious that it's going to occur in B. So you can see it's in the lungs. Because remember, um, the anterior and posterior sacs, they're not well vascularized. Um, so it, it, it has to be in the lungs. So um, the answer is B. So if we move on to 43, so 43 asks, unlike the human respiratory system, in the system of the bird, what do we see? So if you take a look quickly, A, um, it says the lungs are not vascularized. Um, so in birds, the anterior and posterior sacs are not vascularized. The lungs, um, there's no mention of lung vascularization in the stimulus. So we can just assume, we could just knock that one off. So um, it's incorrect because we know that we haven't been told about lung vascularization. So we can knock that off. Um, it says here the diaphragm operates only during exhalation. Um, that is incorrect because it looks like the birds here aren't using a diaphragm um, like humans do. So um, it, it kind of leads on to the other answers, the other questions. So obviously the bird, it looks like the sacs are being used as a diaphragm. So B option is incorrect because they don't doesn't look like birds have a diaphragm. Um, C, air gets into the blood mechanisms not involving diffusion. That's false. I mean, you need diffusion to get the gases into the blood that's how it works so the gases come from the lungs down and then they transfer via diffusion into blood so c is incorrect and d air does not trace the same path during inhalation and exhalation um that is true you can see from figures two and three that air doesn't trace the same path during respiration so the answer is going to be d so i mean process of elimination you could have eyeballed it as well straight away found out it was d but um just to take note of why the other answers are incorrect so if we go to 44 now which uh of these structures in human is similar to the function of birds sacs we've been harping on about this for the last couple of questions the answer is the diaphragm so for 44 this is because um it, you need a structure that can actively contract and expand. The P and Q structures in the birds, so the posterior anterior sacs, they can happily extract, uh, sorry, they can happily expand and contract. So it looks like they're, um, 
they're pretty much uh, behaving as the uh, diaphragm in this instance. So, I mean, you can single out the lung, rib, and trachea because you need something, again, the, the rib isn't going to contract and expand. The trachea is definitely not going to contract and expand. And the, um, the lung isn't active. It doesn't actively contract and expand. It's a more passive contraction and expansion. So you need something active like the, um, uh, I guess, like a diaphragm. So that's why the answer is going to be B. So if we go to 45, the question says air is exhaled from the bird during. This one's actually very easy. So if you actually look at figure three, you can see clearly that air is exhaled, so expiration in B and D. So the answer for 45 is going to be C. So you clearly see it uh, in the diagram. So that one's an easy one. Um, that just looks like Acer just wants to make sure you, you read the uh, stimulus properly. So 46. Now, this, is, this one is a bit of a tricky one. Of, of the bunch of questions, I'd say this is probably the trickiest one. So it's telling you that um, bird, a large bird and a human, they're both breathing at a constant rate of 10 inhalations per minute. So let's just write that. 10 inhalations per minute. Um, and they each begin to inhale the air and assume, so this is also important piece of information, assume the inhalation, the time for inhalation and exhalation are the same. Um, compared with when it's first exhaled from a bird, when will the air be exhaled from human? So let's just take a look at this um, logically here. So 10 inhalations per minute, so the answer is given... a. The answers are in seconds. So let's convert this to seconds. So 10 inhalations per minute is the same as 10 inhalations per 60 seconds, which is the same as, so obviously, if you died, divide, divide. So it's going to be uh, one. So it's going to be one inhalation per six seconds. So that's what's happening in a uh let's say for example remember the bird is going to be it's, its respiratory cycle as we saw here it has two cycles whereas humans we have it in one cycle so we're going to be doing one inhalation per sec per six seconds and we're also going to be doing because remember it says in a stimulus inhalation and exhalations are equal so we're going to be exhaling air exhaling air at one exhalation per six seconds but remember, if birds are doing this in two cycles, that means it's going to take twice as long for the bird to inhale and to exhale air. Exhale air. So that means for a bird, it's going to be 12 seconds. And the question is asking, um, when will air first begin to be exhaled from the human? So if it's going to be 12 seconds, so let's say one exhalation, in 12 seconds for a bird, that means for a human, it's going to be six seconds earlier. So this is a bird and this is human. So you can see if it's going to be twice. So think about it. The way I conceptualize it is humans, that's one. It takes six seconds. Exhalation, six seconds. Whereas birds is it's once. So that's one cycle, so twice. And then exhalation is like, it's once, and then it comes out. So you expire once, and the second expiration is going to be the exhalation. So that's with a bird. So it takes 12 seconds. So the answer, therefore, for 46 has to be C, so six seconds earlier. So that was pretty much the most difficult of the bunch. Now, if we move on to question 47, it's asking, Members of which pairs have the least similar function? Again, we know straight away that the lungs and the sac, so the answer is A just from the top. Lungs in human are highly um, vascularized and they're the primary organs for gas exchange. Whereas we know that the sacs in birds are not well vascularized, um, they're very poorly vascularized. 
and you're not going to get much of the gas exchange there. It's going to occur in the lungs. Um, so we know that the lung and lung of the human and bird are similar. It's where gas exchange occurs. Um, so therefore, A has to be incorrect because um, sacs are obviously not as vascularized as they are in the um, in the human. In, this, in the bird, sacs act more as a diaphragm rather than as the sites of gas exchange. Um, alveoli and bronchioles do act, perform like parabronchi in birds. So those are all correct. So the answer is 47A. So if we move on now to the last question, 48, it asks, um, which of the following is most likely the most important reason that anterior and posterior sacs contract simultaneously and ex expand simultaneously. I mean, just by not even looking at the question, you know straight away it, it's got something to do with the flow of air. So um, just by taking a look at the questions available, the most obvious is going to be A, and it is the answer. I mean, if you're rushing in the gam set, you're like, oh, what is it, what is it? Think about it. If they're contracting and expanding simultaneously, it's all about flow of air. So that's the most important thing to take note of. So we can say it's A. So, I mean, um, why, why wouldn't it be the rest? So to maintain a high air pressure in the lungs is incorrect because if you're contracting and expanding, pressure's changing. So it's going to be high, low, high, low. So that's going to be incorrect. So that only one breath of air is in the respiratory system at any one time. That's incorrect. Remember, birds, they breathe in two cycles. So they're going to have two breaths of air. And finally, um, because regulation by central nervous system involves synchrony, no information is presented um, regarding the central nervous system in a stimulus, so we can assume that it's going to be incorrect. So therefore, the answer has to be A. Now, um, this, this, I think the challenge with this stimulus or, or this unit was being able to read that much information uh, and answering all these questions uh, in a, such a short period of time. Um, but in this instance, it's important to note that it is a lot, a lot of information, but you can actually summarize it down to about five points. It's all about comprehension and speed of comprehension. So start practicing with your GAMSA preparation, reading information um, and actively reading to extract all the important um, information required to answer the questions. If you do have any more questions regarding this um, you know, you can post them in the comment section below or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help you. Uh, thanks for your time now. Bye.